Torchinski Files episode uh, 9? 10? Who the hell knows? Welcome to the Torchinski Files. Ah, that's soothing right there. That's some good stuff. This week, I want to talk to you a little bit about another old-school racing game. Late 70s, early 80s, just so you can see how crappy things were and how damn good all of you have it now stuck at home playing your sim racing games. Because it wasn't always this easy. Someone actually asked me on one of our, on the last episode, uh, about this machine that they saw in the background. And it's a machine worth talking about because it's really pretty fascinating, both in its interesting backstory, a lot of technical quirks, and the general crappiness that makes it really appealing to me, and that of course is the Odyssey 2. Odyssey, video game fun, computer keyboard challenge, the entrance to an alternate world of fire-breathing dragons, hard-hitting sluggers, arcade wizards, outer space wizards, more than 40 games in all, Odyssey, the excitement of a game, the mind of a computer. The Odyssey 2 was the second generation of video game consoles. You had your first generation which was like Magnavox Odyssey 1. So this thing has a real pedigree to it. One of the things that makes the Odyssey kind of amazing is that the guts inside it, the whole chipset inside the Odyssey is actually built by the same company that is very likely the one who made all of the guts inside the computer you're watching this on right now, and that's Intel. Intel, in like the late 70s, designed a set of chips. It had like a graphics chip and a CPU, and they bundled all these things together as like, this would make a great game system. And the most amazing thing about the Odyssey, I personally think, where Atari had a team of programmers, Odyssey had this one guy named Ed Averett cranking out all of these games. And the way they would have him do it is they would tell him, we need something for boys, so Ed would make something that shit blew up. He would say, we need something to appeal to moms, so he'd th crank out some educational games. And then they'd say, we need something for dad, so they made these weird combination board strategy games. This is called Attack of the Time Lord. And well, this one's got some fun effects with that guy who yells at you. But you'll notice, things are pretty simple. This one actually is doing a lot more than some of them did. If you really want to see like what how crappy some of these things could get, let's look at their version of Space Invaders, for example. So these guys... You can see the little man, the mushroom, and the dot. I mean, it's pretty damn crude, really. And before I get to the driving games, let me uh, let me show you one other thing that's kind of fascinating about the Odyssey 2. And that has to do with arguably its most famous and popular game, which was called Casey Munchkin. This is one of those examples where Ed was really using the Odyssey's capabilities to their best effect because this game actually looks pretty good it's better than Atari's Pac-Man was but you see all the traits of what the Odyssey could do you have four 8 by 8 moving objects you have this background grid and you have 12 other things so instead of putting dots everywhere since the Odyssey couldn't really handle that he just made 12 dots and had them move around and then the game has an extra little quirk that Pac-Man didn't. So Atari's lawyers noticed, and since they paid money for the license to Pac-Man, they took him to court, and this right here is why there are look and feel lawsuits. This was the first time that a court said, this looks and feels too much like something else, so you can't do it, so this game actually had to come off the market, and they replaced it with a version that was slightly different and didn't quite feel like it. But, this is still an automotive site, I'm still here to talk about driving and cars, so let's look at the racing games available for the Odyssey. Alright, so... So you know, if you're ready for some real miserable racing action, prepare yourself. So, Speedway, press 1. Skill 1 to 2. Let's put 2, because we're feeling... You know, I'm a professional motor journalist, of course I can do 2. So as you can see, the graphics are not super impressive. They got the colors right, though. They got that purple of the asphalt down just perfectly. And this blob here is your car. It's not particularly well detailed, but... They only had 8 by 8 pixels to work with, so the way this works, so you push up to accelerate, and then you're just trying to dodge these cars, and then when you get hit, you turn into this thing that looks like a marinara sauce stain. And it is not great at all. There's a lot of games like this, this kind of overhead view car racing game, and this one's mildly fun, but really nothing special at all. These things just kind of bounce around. The fact that they're even cars is really pretty abstract. You could be dodging you know, snowflakes and you're a, a very cold moth or something like that. It really barely matters. This is about as minimal a racing game as you can imagine, and it kind of sucks. Now, let's see the other one. Let's see if the other one's any better. Spin Out, which is 
two or three. All right, we'll hit two. We'll do a skill level two. So this is one of those games where you go around a track, a lot like Atari's Indy 500. But even the Atari one, which was kind of blocky, at least your curves weren't all 90 degree <laughs> angles, like every curve in this track. This is the worst possible track to race on that you can imagine. All right, so normally you'd have two people going on here, and you're using a joystick. At least Atari gave you a little driving controller to make it seem more drivey, but this one is, it's not even really anything like driving. You're just like, it's like a weird shitty maze game, but your things are sort of shaped like cars. Pretty shitty. It's a shame that it never really got any good racing games. You know, being the number three competitor out there, it kind of should have. You would think somebody would have really tried to bring it. And there are some people doing homebrew cartridges for this thing today that are actually really pushing this thing's limits and making some great stuff. But so far, as far as I'm aware, nobody's really ever tried to make a really good Odyssey 2 driving game. So, those of you out there looking to program for a Intel 8048 on the Odyssey 2, that's your target. Make a really good driving game for this this hunk of crap. But it's still kind of a fun hunk of crap. All right, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me in my basement. It's not like you have anything better to do right now anyway. So, you know, have a fun time, and I'll be talking to you very soon.